Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Autism Spectrum Disorder. This will be continuing my mental health slash disorder illness type category or playlist I'll make up maybe eventually. But it came with something I wanted to do. I wouldn't regret if I had to take a break from this uh, channel. And I wanted to get a good chunk of them in. But when you do a deep dive on this, or even a small, uh, shallow dive, there's so many. And particularly some of them I've done already, and, and this one in particular, actually, is really gotten huge in its spectrum and what it covers. But these are basically neurodevelopmental disorders. And I've done a one or two here or there. I mean, this is like categories. I'm not a doctor in, in any, you know, any fucking fashion. But I just wanted to say that some of these are um, disabilities that are, have to do with the functioning of the brain. And especially in young and children, they, they lead to autism, uh, intellectual disabilities, conduct disorders, cerebral palsy impairment in vision and hearing so that's basically neurodevelopmental disorders and even adhd i've done one on but in particular this will be um autism spectrum disorder as always i will put the link in the description and i'll say it now because i say it throughout the podcast i do with these type of things when i read the article word for word i interject a little bit here and there However, there are links in the article itself. They're usually underlined or highlighted a different color, let's say blue. And it's a great way to, as you're reading the article, looking through it, and something catches your eye, like a research or a help on how-tos, you can hit these links and go even further. Because a lot of my um, reason for doing this isn't like making people go back to school, although that would be great, get a degree and learn about mental disorders, disabilities, all that type of stuff, but having an informed opinion. So even if you don't want to hear some schmuck from Brooklyn destroy the English language, oh man, some of these podcasts are hilarious, but uh, you could just look at the title, see the article link, go look at it yourself. Now the ones I've been doing now are from the uh, National Institute of Mental Health. And these are read more like an educational thing. But even when it mentions things like the, um, the DSM-5, which is what the uh, APA uses, the American Psychiatric Association, we do want to be skeptical in some sense. And I say this a lot. There are articles out there with their opinion pieces. And this is technically not one, although I can... Remember back in the day, well, I don't know what back in the day is anymore when you get to my age, but in the debate circle, the DSM-5 was something that would be brought up. It's just something that, you know, I give the benefit of the doubt of people uh, looking to do good and find out all about our, you know, behavior and the brain and stuff. So I try to at least do a little bit of research, but I keep in mind there were always new breakthroughs. There were years of crazy psychiatric, um, you know, advice and stuff. And it it always comes down to trying to at least accept that there's a community or a consensus of people who, for the most part, are trying to do good and trying to figure these things out. So, get that out of the way. I'll start reading. Like I said, usually word for word. And I'll interject a little bit here and there. Autism Spectrum Disorder Overview Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD, is a neurological and developmental disorder that affects how people interact with others, communicate, learn, and behave. Although autism can be diagnosed at any age, it is described as a developmental disorder because symptoms generally appear in the first two years of life. According to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the DSM-5, a guide created by the American Psychiatric Association that healthcare providers use to diagnose mental disorders, 
People with ASD often have difficulty with communication and interaction with other people, restricted interest and repetitive behaviors, symptoms that affect their ability to function in school, work, and other areas of life. Autism is known as a spectrum disorder because there is a wide variation in the type and severity of symptoms people experience. People of all genders, races, ethnicities, economic backgrounds can be diagnosed with ASD. Although ASD can be a lifelong disorder, treatments and services can improve a person's symptoms and daily functioning. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that all children receive screening for autism. Caregivers should talk to their child's healthcare provider about ASD screening or evaluation. Signs and Symptoms of ASD The list below gives some examples of common types of behaviors in people diagnosed with ASD. Not all people with ASD will have all behaviors, but most will have several of the behaviors listed below. Social communication interaction behaviors may include making little or inconsistent eye contact, appearing not to look at or listen to people who are talking, infrequently sharing interest, emotion, or enjoyment of objects or activities, including infrequent pointing at or showing things to others, not responding or being slow to respond to one's name or to other verbal bids for attention, having difficulties with the back and forth of conversation, often talking at length about a favorite subject without noticing that others are not interested or without giving others a chance to respond. Displaying facial expressions, movements, and gestures that do not match what is being said. Having an unusual tone of voice that may sound sing-song or flat and robot-like. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> this is in-joke stuff, but... Alright, um... <laughs> Having trouble understanding another person's point of view or being unable to predict or understand other people's actions. Difficulties adjusting behaviors to social situations. Difficulty sharing in imaginative play or in making friends. Restrictive, repetitive behaviors may include repeating certain behaviors or having unusual behaviors, such as repeating words or phrases. A behavior called Ecolia. <laughs> Having a lasting, intense interest in specific topics such as numbers, details, or facts. Showing overly focused interest such as with moving objects or parts of objects. <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Get my producers on the other side of the glass. Let's knock this off. Becoming upset by slight changes in routine and having difficulty with transitions. Being more sensitive or less sensitive than other people to sensory input, such as light, sound, clothing, or temperature. People with ASD may also experience sleep problems and irritability. People on the autism spectrum may also have many strengths, including being able to learn things in detail and remember information for long periods of time, being strong visual and auditory learners, excelling in math, science, music, or art. Now, I was laughing, but when you look at the, some of these, the way it's worded, it's it just... This is the reason why people get skeptical and think of some of this as nonsense. This, this is what I was just thinking, you know, because, you know, <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Well, I'll continue. Um, causes and related factors. Researchers don't know the primary causes of ASD, but studies suggest that a person's genes can act together with aspects of their environment to affect development in ways that lead to ASD. 
Some factors that are associated with an increased likelihood of developing ASD include having a sibling, <laughs> a sibling with ASD, having older parents, having certain genetic conditions such as Down syndrome or Fragile X syndrome, hmm. having a very low birth weight, Yeah, I'm interjecting again here, but if I can remember correctly, when I was younger, I'm 52 now, so a lot of people wouldn't have been on the spectrum. The more we learn, the more we understand things, the spectrum is huge. And when you think of some of these things they're talking about, it just, I don't know, it's it's hard to... You know, convince an, an everyday person or just a guy going about his business or a woman and just have a conversation about it and do we all know somebody, friend, family member someone who says they're on the autism spectrum but you just go, no, it doesn't make sense like, there's nothing wrong with them Like, and I think that's a problem maybe even with me I guess that's being my age I try to be open-minded and I even apologize on some of these for saying you know mental health illnesses and disorders there's a distinction there and i just you know try to go with the article and stuff but in any case i just um i look at this and even if i'm reading and stuff just uh i don't know i wish more people would just be informed all right diagnosing asd healthcare providers Diagnose ASD by evaluating a person's behavior and development. ASD can usually be reliably diagnosed by age 2. It is important to seek an evaluation as soon as possible. The earlier ASD is diagnosed, the sooner treatments and services can begin. Wow, by age 2. Wow. Man. Diagnosis in young children. Diagnosis in young children is often a two-stage process. Stage 1. General development screening during well-child checkups. Every child should receive well-child checkups with a pediatrician or an early childhood health care provider. See, now when they have well with the dash child, I guess I'm supposed to know that, but I guess it's don't always bring your kid to the doctor when they're sick. That's just what I'm going to go with. But okay, I don't know really what the fuck that means, but... Okay. General development and screening well-child checkups. Every child should receive well-child checkups with a pediatrician or an early childhood health care provider. The American Academy of Pediatric recommends that all children receive screening for developmental delays at their 9 to 18 and 24 or 30-month well-child visits, with specific autism screenings at their 18 and 21, 24-month well-child visits. So well-child is something even more than I'm thinking of. Like I said, I didn't know what it means, but I'm starting to guess that it would be um, something that parents who have children would know about, like it's part of the thing. So I guess I could be you know, just, I'm not a parent. But when I, mean, I keep seeing well child checkups, it was just like where my I, I was inferring. Uh, a child may receive additional screenings if they have a higher likelihood of ASD or developmental problems. Children with a higher likelihood of ASD include those who have a family member with ASD, show some behaviors that are typical of ASD, have older parents, have certain genetic conditions, or who have who had a very low birth weight. You notice that they say older parents? Like, you know, come on, give an age. If you're going to do the studies, tell me, you know, parents who are over 50 who have kids, like, or things like that. Anyway, considering caregivers' experiences and concerns is an important part of the screening process for young children. 
The healthcare provider may ask questions about the child's behaviors and evaluate those answers in combination with information from ASD screening tools and clinical observations of the child. Read more about the screening instruments on the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CD website, CDC website. By the way, again, blue highlighted underlined link, screening instruments. So you can actually look to see what screening instruments are. It's, that's what I, I recommend if you're into it and you want to find out more. If a child shows developmental differences in behavior or functioning during the screening process, the healthcare provider may refer the child for additional evaluation. Um, stage 2. Additional Diagnostic Evaluation It is important to accurately detect and diagnose children with ASD as early as possible, as this will shed light on their unique strengths and challenges. Early detection also can help caregivers determine which services, educational programs, and behavioral therapies are most likely to be helpful for their child. A team of healthcare providers who have, who have experienced diagnosing ASD will conduct a diagnostic evaluation. This team may include child neurologists, developmental pa pediatricians, speech language pathologists, child psychologists and psychiatrists, educational specialists, and occupational therapists. The diagnostic evaluation is likely to include medical and neurological examinations, assessment of the child's cognitive abilities, assessment, assessment of the child's language abilities, observation of the child's behavior, an in-depth conversation with the child's caregivers about the child's behavior and development, assessment of age-appropriate skills needed to complete daily activities independently, such as eating, dressing, and toileting. Because ASD is a complex disorder that sometimes occurs with other illnesses or learning disorders, the comprehensive evaluation may include blood test, hearing test. The evaluation may lead to formal diagnostic and recommendations for treatment. Diagnosis in older children and adolescents. Caregivers and teachers are often the first to recognize ASD symptoms in older children and adolescents who attend school. The school's special education team may perform an initial evaluation and then recommend that a child undergo additional evaluation with their primary health care provider or a health care provider who specializes in ASD. A child's caregivers may talk with these health care providers about their child's social difficulties, including problems with subtle communication. For example, some children may have problems understanding tone of voice, facial expressions, or body language. Older children and adolescents may have trouble understanding figures of speech, humor, or sarcasm. They also may have trouble forming friendships with peers. Well, sarcasm, that rules uh, everything I do is sarcastic, so. so. Good luck meeting me. Diagnosis in adults. Diagnosing ASD in adults is often more difficult than diagnosing ASD in children. In adults, some ASD symptoms can overlap with symptoms of other mental health disorders, such as anxiety disorder or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. Adults who notice signs of ASD should talk with their healthcare provider and ask for a referral for an ASD evaluation. Although evaluation for ASD in adults is still being refined, adults may be referred to may be referred to a neuropsychologist yeah, neuropsychologist, psychologist, or psych, psychiatrist who has experience with ASD. The expert will ask about social interaction and communication challenges, sensory issues, repetitive behaviors, restricted interests. The evaluation may also include a conversation with caregivers or other family members to learn about that person's early developmental history, which can help ensure an accurate diagnosis. Receiving a correct diagnosis of ASD as an adult can help a person understand past challenges, identify personal strengths, 
and find the right kind of help. Studies are underway to determine the types of services and support that are most helpful for improving the functioning and community inter inter integration of autistic transition age youth and adults. Treatments and therapies. Treatments for ASD should begin as soon as possible after diagnosis. Early treatment for ASD is important as proper care services can reduce individuals' difficulties while helping them build on their strengths and learn new skills. People with ASD may face a wide range of issues, which means that there is no single best treatment for ASD. Working closely with a healthcare provider is an important part of finding the right combination of treatment and services. Medication. A healthcare provider may prescribe medication to treat specific symptoms with medication. A person with ASD may also have fewer problems with irritability, aggression, repetitive behavior, hyperactivity, attention problems, anxiety, and depression. Read more about the latest medical warnings, patient medication guides, and information on the newly approved medications at the Food and Drug Administration's FDA website. Highlighted blue, uh, easy hit link to hit. Behavioral, psychological, and educational interventions. People with ASD may be referred to a healthcare provider who specializes in providing behavioral, psychological, educational, or skill building interventions. These programs are highly structured and intensive as they may involve caregivers, siblings, and other family members. These programs may help people with ASD to learn social communication and language skills, reduce behaviors that interfere with daily functioning, increase or build upon strengths, learn life skills for a living independently. Other resources. Many services, programs, and other resources are available to help people with ASD. Here are some tips for finding these additional services. Contact your healthcare provider, local health department, school, or autism advocacy group to learn about special programs or local resources. Find an autism support group. Sharing information and experiences can help people with ASD and their caregivers learn about the treatment options and ASD related programs. Record conversations and meetings with healthcare providers and teachers. This information may help when it's time to decide which programs and services are appropriate. Keep copies of healthcare reports and evaluations. This information may help people with ASD qualify for special programs. I just, my brain just found it odd that it said record conversations and meetings with healthcare providers and teachers. Okay, like you just slap the thing on the desk, take your phone, and go, okay, I'm recording this. See, that seems funny, but I guess in that circle it's not. And do you see, like, a lot of these things involve so much family members and caregivers, how these issues, illnesses, disorders affect people's lives and the lives around them? Uh, here we go. Join a study. Clinical trials and research studies that look at new ways to prevent, detect, or treat diseases and conditions. The goal of clinical trials is to determine if a new test or treatment works and is safe. Although individuals may benefit from being part of the clinical trial, participants should be aware that the primary purpose of a clinical trial is to gain new scientific knowledge so that others may be better helped in the future. Researchers at NIMH and around the country conduct many studies with patients and healthy volunteers. We have new and better treatment options today because of what clinical trials uncovered years ago. Be part of tomorrow's medical breakthroughs. Talk to your healthcare provider about clinical trials, their benefits and risks, and whether one is right for you. To learn more or find a study, visit, and then there's links, NIH clinical trials webpage, caregivers, and there's learn more section, which shows free brochures and shareable resources, which I think is great. You know, people could download their own things, Little flow charts and whatever to get an idea. It's uh, federal resources section. There's a one, two, three, four, five, six 
resources and this helps with people find local you know doctors or maybe even you know paying for the whatever procedures and testing has to be done again my heart just goes out to people who you know deal with it on an everyday basis and you know how severe is it to certain people and this thing even tells you some of these things overlap and i say this a lot in a lot of these um oh, that's kind of weird but that it is very confusing to the everyday average person so many disorders and illnesses have overlapping features and it which makes it much makes it hard for the doctors and specialists to figure it out it then goes into when it was last reviewed which is i always like uh reviewed february 2023 and this gets me to the point where why i talked about the beginning opinion pieces because you'll read articles and i like to give credit to whatever article i'm reading because i do read an occasional article that has a more of an opinion slant on it but i wanted to do these more from an educational so most of all of them are from the national institute of mental health and they're more an educational thing uh just to give more information but you know, you can at least see some of these links lead to real things. <laughs> some of them are researches and testing or abstracts. And again, to see at the bottom when it was last reviewed. And here would also be sections where they've edited, you know, because uh, the community, educational, scientific, you're always looking to find new information, correct mistakes, and build on, you know, the success of the past. So, this would be here would it be so that'll be it for this article again my heart goes out to people um you know just growing up the way i did where i am who i am genetics environmental it all you know makes me who i am and we all we all feel it around us if we're not exactly knee deep in it if it's not your own child with severe symptoms it could be your friend's brother you know and you know, you look back at when you're growing up with them and, oh, this is what's going on. And again, back then, we didn't get diagnosed with, for some of this stuff. There was just, the spectrum never included us. And I say us, but yeah, me too. I'm probably in this fucking thing. Let's be honest. I probably have numerous fucking craziness in here, but that's just the thing. Me even calling it craziness is probably insulting, but. Listen, I'm just some asshole from Brooklyn, New York, who, through circumstances of life, found himself doing certain things. A couple of them were meditation and breathing exercises and deep diving into psychology, neurology, blah, blah, blah. And I say this a lot, but one of the most fascinating things that I did deep dives on were how magicians fool you and mentalists and how, like, the church people, when they do that, oh, they're going to talk to the dead people. It is so fascinating to me, the human behavior. A magician can show you a trick, and they can just still fool you with it, because they just know how the brain works and how people are going to act. And we're talking about autism spectrum disorder. This is something that's big now. I mean, because of the spectrum is so wide, all... Like, is there a number here? Because is there a year? I'm trying to find the other link I have. Um, I think one of my links had a, a thing where it said where it included other things because this DSM five is actually five, so maybe it's like five renditions of it. Obviously, to keep updating it, and things get included, things get dropped. The more we know about it, but autism is everywhere in the news and articles. And you start seeing it more and more when it has to do with um, celebrities and, you know, people who, you know, you see in the news. And, you know, we have, like, billions of people on this planet. And when they tell you the numbers, like 1 in 15 people, you know, adults or whatever, you got to get a numbers of that. And who is being affected? Who's, you know, on a daily basis, you know, having to deal with this? And we're talking about disorders when hair functionality. Just think about other factors of life, like uh, paraplegics and what is that syndrome called? Like 
trapped in locked in body syndrome where you can't move every day they have to be cared for and stuff my uh, heart goes out to everybody kudos to the caretakers and healthcare workers and doctors and all the real good ones not the assholes who abuse the system and game everything try to make money or like abusing people old people you know in general i try to give the benefit of the doubt but we're dealing with such a big thing autism is just such a headline thing in a way and not in the way you would think it would be again growing up it would never be a factor that you know three of my friends would be um in the spectrum it just had there was you know there was no answer for it in that sense it didn't have to fall into a category you would just he was this way or there was that way now it's everything and i can understand some of the arguments about you know the bullshit about psychiatry and whatever but you know i'm gonna have to go with statistics and the fact that i say this a lot uh, talking helps people and when you're talking to a friend someone you care someone you love someone who is informed about the opinion or informed about the information has some idea of it so yeah talk therapy cognitive behavior therapy it, it works to a certain extent and when you got things like this, uh, neurodevelopmental, you know, it's just, okay, there's, a, there's, a, there's an issue where people can be helped because they could be taught different ways of thinking, of changing the way they perceive things and the input of information, right? But when there's a chemical imbalance, when there's a genetic factor in here, there's nothing you can do in that sense. That's why they try to catch it early. Give them whatever tools they can to help people from the beginning, early on, function with these things. Because right now we don't have that magical cure. We don't have the pill that corrects brain synapses and neural pathways and whatever. But we're working on it, I hope. And that's the goal of a lot of these things. This whole... What did I do now? Seven, eight, nine podcasts all on mental health illnesses and disorders. Again, something I wanted to do from the beginning when me and my fiance planned on doing the channel and even including friends with like physical health and weightlifting and keeping in shape. It was going to be more of a separate thing from the addictions channel with, uh, you know, my videos on my podcast on fucking TV shows and movies. Especially my rants on this bullshit, you know, I get annoyed. But here, it's just me trying to say, maybe someone gets helped, become informed. We all have people we know, close, not too close, but they affect us and it ripples out. You know, people have bad days, you know, they gotta come home and take care of people. And there's some people, you know, with their own issues that have issues that are having issues with issues. And then, that's really the ending to this, I guess. Um... Again, my heart goes out to everybody. Autism spectrum disorder, one of the things that is so prevalent in most news things, um, and with it growing, its spectrum growing, so many people are just being included into it. And then it could be scary a little bit, I get that, but I'd rather know the truth, I'd rather learn more than be in the dark, but I get it sometimes. There's that there's a balance to it all, I guess. So, anybody with care, care, caretakers and healthcare workers and parents and brothers and siblings, kudos on you and my best to you and yours. I hope everybody's doing well. Take care.